Hey guys and girls, things get better by choice, not by chance. Remember that, no one ever comes to the rescue. I've been working in the business world now for about 25 years, like after uni, that's what it was. Um, I've owned an office in my uh, early 20s, which I ran for a number of years. I've worked in publishing for over 12 years, running hundreds of millions in revenue um, at News Corp. I've um, done a lot of training, one-on-one, -on -one, coaching, speaking, auctioneering, um, and I've got 20, you know, like 25 years, I, I thought to myself, I made these notes, what are five things that I reckon that you need to actually master for happiness in business and in life? So here they are. Number one, ruthlessly eliminate, ruthlessly eliminate dickheads from your life. I know it doesn't sound like it's a business strategy, but I'm telling you, it is. Think about it. If you hang around with four fuckwits, before you know it, you will be the fifth. It happens like in an invisible way. So really be very careful who you lend your mind to. You become the people you hang out with. That is so, so critical. Just be very, just be ruthless with who you lend your mind to. The next thing is, I'm gonna, and by the way, can I just tell you, the formula for happiness is stay away from assholes. End of story, let's move on. Number two, simplify it. Decide what you want, write the fucking plan, and then do something about it every day. It is that easy, it's a three point plan. If you can't explain your business plan, your life plan to a 10 year old, it is not simple and clear enough. Have another crack at it. It is that simple. Work out what you've got to do, then do it. You don't need therapy, you need clarity. And for those of you that want top clarity questions, read my last Facebook post or the one I did earlier on this evening. They're great questions. They're the ones I use with one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. The next thing is, Please don't worry about the listing that you missed out on. Don't be myopic where you worry about one listing. Worry about the 10 you never got called into. Worry about the ones you're driving by and you see a signboard pop up and you never got called into. That's your worry. Think abundance, think opportunity. Don't think scarcity. Think about what's out there and I've got to tell you, it's not just about sales, because marketing is about getting noticed. Sales is about closing the listing once you're there. You won't be closing a listing if you never got called out. That's why I've always pushed that principle, the attraction business principle. It's not who you know, it's who knows you. So think big, think big. The next one is, I want you to take more risks. You're going to die. You heard that. You're going to die. Think about that. The odds are irresistible. It's 100%. No one has not ever died. So I have to say to you, when you accept that, all of a sudden it changes because you realize there's a deadline and we know what deadlines do. So that means take risks because you're going to die anyway, so go hard. Think about it. In Australia or New Zealand, what is the worst that can happen? Like, hypothetically, I'm in this home here in the inner west of Sydney. Let's assume I lost this and I lost investments and I had no money in the bank account and I had just had nothing. You simply can't starve in this country. It is quite rare to actually see someone starving. I mean, I've got to tell you, if I had nothing, I know that I'm resourceful enough tomorrow to actually, look, I'd even, if I had to, potentially I'd be walking through Woolies or Coles and I would slip a few grapes in. You can't starve here, so go for it. In fact, may I say to you, all the good stuff happens outside of your comfort zone. Remember that. Embrace temporary incompetence. That's where all the good stuff happens in life. So take risks. The last thing I'm going to say to you is this, be a nice person. 
And you can't be a bad person and do a training course to become a nice person. Nice person, I reckon that happens in the first 15 years of your life. But be a nice person. I sat down with a guy the other day and he was super nice to me, but he was rude to the waiter. He's not a nice person. Because if someone's going to be nice to you, but they're not nice to the waiter, they're genuinely down deep down. Their intent is that they're not a nice person. Last thing I want to tell you is on this Sunday night in Australia, it is clear the election is over. We have a clear winner. And I'm going to give you some dialogue you're going to use tomorrow to people on your database, to potential vendors, to people that have been thinking of selling. And you're going to get on the phone and you're going to use this powerful script because it is going to get you appraisals and listings. Here it is. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, I'm letting you know that we are calling all the people that have indicated that they might be selling in 2016 or had some interest. And the reason why is this. Now that it's clear that the Liberal government has won the election, we are seeing a lot of buyers hit the marketplace. Many vendors had pressed the pause button and held off coming onto the market. Their plan was to wait till the election was over and then to potentially put their property on in spring. We're advising all our vendors to have first move advantage and to come onto the market in isolation, not in competition. Because if they come on in spring with other vendors, it'll mean that buyers will have more to pick from. What we're telling our clients is to sprint to the sell line, to put their properties on the market before other vendors, to snatch the buyers that are coming on now, knowing that buyers will have confidence that negative gearing is not being abolished or changed. So what we're saying to you is even if we put your property on the market and had it on a soft campaign, so if a buyer walked in and was prepared to pay top dollar, we at least have your property on our books. If not, we'll know that we're gonna beat the other properties on the market because we're gonna get the photography and all the marketing collateral and marketing material ready before other properties, so you're gonna beat them because we expect in September, with an oversupply of property coming on the market due to the pause button for the election, that there will be a softening of prices happening September, October, November. Good dialogue, and by the way, it's good because I believe it. I think that's what's going to happen in the market. Smart people will come on now. Guys and girls, for our real estate gym members, let me just tell you this week, we got John McGrath part two. Everyone's raving about part one. Part two is coming to you in the next couple of days. The second thing is I'm interviewing a four part series with Charles Tarby this week. We're going to look at finding sellers, delivering an unstoppable listing presentation. We're going to talk about the actual methods to get vendors to accept the reality of the marketplace and his total system. He's got the best of the best of 25 years, including his work that he's done with C21 Plus training program, and he's going to deliver that in a co-coaching segment with me. In addition to that, um, some work I did with Matt Steinway, VPA The System, on getting vendor paid advertising for print and online is going to be released this week to our gym members and my prospector is getting incredible results. Never forget, the agent that generates most of the amount of appointments wins. We are getting people that are doing 700 calls a week, and they were doing 20 calls a week before my prospector. I'm waiting for the first one to hit the 1,000 calls dialed. Guys and girls, have a great week. See you next Sunday.